got asked a couple of things that I wanted to clarify here at the end of this at the end of the statement of what the heck is a go a no go and a field gauge. What is it? Okay. Well, the first thing I want to tell you is these are three gauges to allow you to judge headspace without doing a chamber casting or without doing anything weird. Okay, so here you go. The go gauge says that the chamber is long enough. So the go gauge, the bolt should be able to come up against the back end of this go gauge and there should be the plus room available. There's a notch cut out on the back of some of these to allow the extractor to kind of fit in. But if you're really going to use a go or a no-go gauge, you should take the extractor out and get anything else that would put any pressure on this. The abutment pushes up against the back end of the go gauge, and if it went in the chamber, there's a little bit of space. The no-go gauge tells you that the chamber is short enough. Remember, there was a spec on how long that chamber is supposed to be. So this is the minus depth right here, okay? So if you got to go in a no-go gauge, they're probably six thousandths of an inch difference from one another, and they're designed as a quick test to tell you whether or not the chamber is long enough and the chamber is short enough, okay? The field gauge says, in a military environment, if the no-go gauge drop, the bolt drops on the no-go gauge because the chamber has just burned open to the point where it'll actually fit, the field gauge says, ah, this is a rough test to say whether or not we might want to leave this thing in theater or give it to some backroom guard or some guy guarding a train, but let's maybe perhaps think about taking it out of frontline service because eventually a piece of brat's going to fail in it and tie the gun up. So we really only know if it's actually going to go bang once, or do we ship it out of theater, ship it back home to get rebarreled? Go, no go, field.